Right, so this is going to be the first flight for me in the F-14A. Now this is what amounts to the later F-14A model. As far as I know, there will be at least two more coming out. The early A version, as well as the Iranian version. I look forward to both, but for now we are going to have a look on this particular bird. So f the first thing we are gonna do is we are going to double check all control surfaces. We are gonna check. The cockpit looks somewhat similar, so hopefully it's not all that much we need to relearn for this one. Spoilers are on, and... Wing sweep should be automatic, and I just realized I need to... No, I actually don't need to, to uh, adjust that. Don't worry about it. I was kind of worried I would need to uh, take a look at the rudder, but I didn't really have to do that. So, let's roll. Troll. Also, I just realized that I might need to check my nose wheel steering. Uh, and that is... Interestingly enough, exactly what it's supposed to be. So we are gonna just double check all the controls here. The controls are good, so nose wheel steering is engaged. So far, a lot of the stuff from the F-14 Bravo seems transferable. But that is only to be expected, considering this is the later of the Alpha models. Still, it's nice to see that Heat Blur is actually going for some of the less advanced versions. I mean, it it must have been tempting for them to go for the D version, but they didn't do that, and I'm kind of grateful for it. Because if you ask me, DCS should focus a lot more on the Cold War. So, uh, yeah. So we are going to uh, head to the taxiway. And just use the guard. Copy that. Looks like Jester is a Rio veteran, considering he sounds just like the Rio that flies in the later Tomcats. Yeah, I know. It's probably the same gesture, and it, it is as it should be. So, disabling nose wheel steering. And we are going to put those engines to the test. go. Wheels up. Trim seems to work fine right out of the box. I mean, the updated audio is just amazing. It feels very different in the best sort of way. We're going to reduce our speed a little bit. And we are actually going to manually shift the wings there. And with the wings fully folded in, 
We'll head for a low run of Vegas. No, I um, don't think this is low enough. We need to get get lower. We need to get like vegan low on this. I mean, it's not it's not low unless you are essentially knocking out a bunch of house things, house windows. So lower, please. Think rate's too high. Oh, you think? You don't want to see what I'm seeing here, then, Jester. You really don't. Whoa! I can't believe we actually made it, made it through there. So let's start a climb and just put her through her paces. That sound, that sound is really amazing. Especially that rolling thunder kind of effect is really spot on. They they nailed that one. Anyone who's ever been to an air show has heard. Especially that powerful thrust sound. So I'm not really trying to induce the engines to malfunction here but it would be interesting to see if what limitations if any we can get from them so we are going to cool them down and we are <laughs> yeah I'm trying to do the compressor stall but I think I did too much of a basically a climb so this is the a version obviously so we are going to see if the compressor stall can be done. We're not going to have as much acceleration as we had during the previous climb. And we are going to try to get our angle of attack to unreasonable levels. So we don't really have anything to pursue here, but we are going to have to pretend that we do. Right now we are being forwarded a lot by the momentum of just staying put, so... But I've reduced thrust to about half, so we should hopefully see... ...some effects on the engines from the high angle of attack soon enough. So far we are not reaching any compressors, a compressor stall. In fact, it seems like we are more prone to an actual stall in this particular mode. So we are going to turn around again and we are going to see if we can entice a compressor stall with a little bit more speed here. I don't really have experience inducing compressor stalls in the Tomcat, but I do know essentially how the best way to induce compressor stalls in the Vigan. And obviously so far it seems like the F-14A is a bit more Im immune to those kinds of compressor stalls. As usual, Heathrow has done an absolutely amazing work on the texture of the aircraft, so I can't—I don't really have any complaints there. In fact, 
I think we're going to extend our wings, create a little bit more drag here. I think it might be that the wings, when folded inward, might simply be too big of an advantage and might actually All right, the wings on auto it is. Yeah, I think we can hear some of the rumblings from a potential compressor fold right there. So, flying straight up is simply not enough. Well, let's simply have to try and induce it some other way. We'll head out over the desert and... We are gonna let the momentum just take us forward on this one. Actually, let's follow that road there. Well, at oh, least tearing bad, real bad. At, at least tearing off the wings is essentially the same as it is on the Bravo version. So at least that part is working just as similar. So we better grab a new jet then, and then we'll try to induce the. The compressor stall again. Hopefully that will work. Might not. So yeah, cockpit looks fairly similar. This is a late A model. So uh, most of the stuff will still be where you left it, so to speak. It also means that if you, as long as you feel comfortable with the Bravo version, it's uh, not that much of a difference. But at, of course, it's that is from all about 10 minutes of flying, so I shouldn't really talk about differences until I've actually tried it more. But so far it seems to inherit, a, not really inherit, be the origin of, I should say most of the same flaws that the Bravo has. So we are gonna try we're gonna try the infamous compressor stall obviously. Because it's it's not a Tomcat unless you're trying to bring it into a flat spin, right?
we are gonna just clear the raceway get it in over the open desert and reduce speed a little bit and then start high angle of attack maneuvers Yeah, I think we just got what we wanted, not because that's a good thing. Yeah, nose down, definitely nose down here. Alright, let's see if this works the same way as the Vigan. If it doesn't, we aim for the Trump Tower, obviously. Get that of yeah so recovery seems to be similar to the vegan when it comes to a compressor stall you basically <coughs> roll back your throttle a little bit and then you simply go for throttle again once you ha are in a better position so we're gonna try a little bit more of that a little bit on higher altitude We are gonna go full speed and just test the climb rate. The climb rate is obviously fantastic, but we've all we've already tested a bunch of that. So we are gonna keep trying. So right now our angle of attack is 50, and that is just sustained by our engines at this point. So we're going to reduce thrust a little bit, so we're not in... In... Uh, ah, sorry, I lost my words there for a moment. So we're not in afterburner, we are going to stabilize a little bit, and then we'll, we will resume our angle of attack maneuvers. What I can say so far is that without being in an actual dogfight, it's a little bit difficult to induce a compressor stall. In fact, it's, so far it seems like you are more prone to a regular stall than anything else. So let's just go nose down and we'll try again. Yes, honey, I know I'm stalling. Thank you. Oh, we actually got uh, a fire hazard on board. So, obviously, we managed to do something right or something horribly wrong, depending on how you look at it. I like to think that I did something right because I was trying to induce a error I haven't seen before. And I have to say, the engine catching fire is obviously one I haven't actually seen before in the Tomcat. So, you know the fact that jets sometimes can flame out? This is the actual opposite of that. So, uh, landing a, flying a jet over Las Vegas that's on fire is probably in the vicinity of not even remotely fucking allowed. So we are gonna ruin someone's day here, and... Ah, uh, we don't actually have any weapons. So, I was actually more aiming to try and drop the tanks down on some... ...housing, but... Uh, Alright, so what happens if we actually throttle up right now? We seem to get some thrust from the left engine. And we obviously have enough hydraulics going to actually attempt a landing. So, analysis uh, traffic. This is shooter inbound F-14. Uh, got right engine on fire. Request emergency permission to land. So, 
So our approach vector here is just absolutely abysmal, but I'm just gonna live with it. I can probably take her around for another pass, but with a burning engine, like... If your engine is burning, that's essentially when you just want to try and get the jet to crash in some area where there's, a, where there's no people. And then you just want to pail out. I keep getting that stall warning though for some unimaginable reason. Despite the fact that I feel that I have a somewhat decent control over the plane. Especially when I increase the throttle a little bit, but obviously the engine is also a bit mismanaged. So I can't actually have too much thrust on the left engine or the entire plane is just going to feel weird. So we're gonna set her down gently here. That was obviously not gentle, but I mean, if we got one thing burning, why not two? So yeah, fail flight yeah, galore here. Uh, the, the right wing is damaged. Oh, you don't say, Jester. I didn't notice that the right thing was damaged. Here, let me help you out of the airplane before something worse happens. Fairly certain that I just killed us. Fairly certain, fairly certain that we should just... Well, obviously we need to take a photo of ourselves with this. I mean, it's not even a question. Obviously, we need to have a pilot photo of ourselves with... ...the glorious aircraft that we managed to land, and... Hey, Jester is over there as well. So Jester is also over there looking very happy, obviously. But I won't be fucking around. Uh, let's just do third times the charm. And this time we are going to just make a more straightforward flight of it. Just try to get us from, uh, say, Nellis to Groom Lake. Just a... Just a transfer flight or similar so we can get try and do some maneuvers get a feel for her nothing really spectacular nothing like that awful awful landing so so far I really enjoy the new engine effects Th those are absolutely absolutely amazing I mean, when you do the flyby and listen to the Tomcat, the feeling, not only in your ears, but also that strange feeling in your chest from the power wave, uh, you can feel that from, uh, from, th from the sound, and it is, ab it is just, that's good work by Heathblur, but then again, Heathblur has always taken their work above and beyond, so I shouldn't be surprised. This time, like I said, our goal will not be to try and induce any disasters. The straight flying there. So re-trim a bit, and climb. So yeah, still a fairly nice bird to fly, even though 
she obviously just wants to kill you, but that is Tomcat for you. If you're not prepared to be mur absolutely murdered by the Tomcat, then the Tomcat is not really the plane for you. It's, that's just the simple proof. So I think we are actually going to try and break some kind of speed record here. Just put her on standard and full speed ahead. Let's just let's <laughs> let's just check our heading. Well, we're not really heading for Groom Lake, are we? We need to enter the no fly zone and head towards this direction. And of course, Groom Lake having such a vast airstrip will benefit us immensely. Master arm is on. Gun rate. Well, we can just check that off. I haven't really bound the controls for the for any any of those things yet, so it's just futile to try and try them right now. I am kind of tempted to just dismiss Groom Lake and try to land and try to land on this road instead, but I'm fairly certain that would invite just even more disaster. So we're not going. To. But I do admit it is tempting. I also like the fact that the sound is traveling ahead uh, behind the aircraft. So if you ha position the camera just in front of the aircraft, there's almost no sound whatsoever. But if you place the camera right behind the airplane, you are just gonna get an earful, and that's so delightful. Yep, it is the F-14A. So here's what we're gonna do, just to invite another disaster onto this disaster of a year. Uh, we are going to cut our engines and try to do a dead, do a dead stick landing, just a few miles out. We get whatever speed the engines can grant us up to that point, but once we have reached that point, we are on our own. Oh, and of, I managed to break the aircraft, sorry, so obviously we're not going to do that. I felt like I was going, I felt like I was going to pull some maneuvers, but no, that didn't work. And we don't actually have any sort of control surfaces left, so... Well, this failed flight ends with three aircraft lost, 
but I would actually say that at least one of those aircraft we managed to somewhat save, but not in any big degree. Well, considering that the Tomcat A we got right now is one of the later versions, there aren't going to be that profound a difference between them. But I do expect there to be more differences when we get the early F-14A down the line. However, we don't really know when that's going to be. So that is going to conclude this fail flight, since we have lost three aircraft already. But And to be honest, if you are looking for more F-14 content, this is not the channel. I usually fly the Vigan. And uh, I hope you people have a really good day. Take care now.